Pastor Bill Abraham in Tanzania. Pastor Bill Abraham has been has been teaching back to basics school of ministry for several years there in Tanzania. And because the people do not speak any English in his congregation, he takes our textbooks, ladies and gentlemen, and he translates them into Swahili and the native dialects. And that's how he is, has been able to, to graduate students from the school of ministry. It's a tedious work. We give a, a shout out to Dr. Bill Abraham in Tanzania. And as you prepare to graduate your students on August 26, we love you. We thank God for you. Great job, Pastor Bill. Content well, it's Dr. Bill Abraham, because he received an honorary doctorate degree from us two, three years ago at the first graduation when we all met in Nairobi and Mombasa, Kenya. So great works are happening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I guess God has given me East Africa uh, among the nations of the world to train them. We're training them in the ways of the Lord, in the word of God, launching pastors to go forth after they complete their studies. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so we bless God for those who are newly ordained. And uh, all of our graduates here in the U.S., if, if, if you believe uh, it's time for you to be ordained, if you've graduated, if you've got your degree, contact me and we'll talk about your ordination. Linda Barrett, we'll talk about your ordination. We thank God for what he is doing, what he has done. Also, in October, Back to Basics Ministries is going to uh, Portmore, Jamaica, where we will celebrate in the second graduation of our Back to Basics students in Portmore. And we're in partnership with the Power of Faith Ministries, Bishop Delford Davis in the great Bible school there. Two years ago, we went, we graduated about 160 people. We're going in October, Jackie and I, to graduate over 100 people. God is doing mighty things. Then we will meet with Bishop Wright in Kingston, Jamaica, as he launches his school of ministry using our materials. God is opening doors for us. So ladies and gentlemen, you may say, well, what can I do for God? There are a lot of things that God wants done. You see, God wants this gospel to go forth. He wants the word of God to reach every nation. He wants everyone to be saved. And you can do your part. We're doing our part. And, and you're partners with us. I want to thank God for all of our partners who partner with us through your gifts, your prayer, your love and support to enable us to go to Kenya, East Africa. And we were there. We left on July 12th. We arrived about uh, almost 30 hours later on July 13th. And then we spent several days in Mombasa and Nairobi, and then almost two days traveling back home. But we got the job done in the name of Jesus. We got the job done. Bishop Elijah Wena, we thank God for you. Bishop Jacko, we thank God for you. We thank God for all uh, of our helpers, uh, Apostle Victor, Apostle George, Apostle Eunice, Apostle Grace, all of you who uh, work so diligently in that class of 2017 to make sure everyone graduated and graduated uh, with honors. And you all did very well. We commend you. We thank God for that mighty graduation uh, uh, exercise as we graduated. Uh, many people from the class of 2017 in Mombasa, Kenya, and then we ordained many people to the gospel ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. God wants to use you. The Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. And so we just thank God. We just thank God for what he's doing. And we give him the glory and the honor and the praise. 
Now let me just set up this other system here. And um, then we'll be able to continue with, with this with this um, broadcast. Okay. Just bear with me. Praise God. We thank God for you. We praise God. We give God the glory and the honor. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful day. What a wonderful day God has given to us. What a wonderful day. Thank God for his goodness and his mercy. We look forward to our trips. We look forward to what God is wanting to do with us. And we give him the praise. So we're set up now. We're uh, broadcasting via YouTube live. And we're on um, Go to Meet Me. So we thank God. So let us pray, ladies and gentlemen. Let's pray. Then we're going to get into some word. We welcome you once again to the Worship Where I Am Church, the Back to Basics Church Online. We're going to change the name soon in September. Starting in September, we're going to change the name of the church from the Worship Where I Am Church to the Back to Basics Online Church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your mighty works. We honor you, Lord Jesus, and worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins. You took away our sins. You became our propitiation. You died on the cross that we might have eternal life. Lord God, we receive you as our Savior, Lord God and King. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. We present our bodies to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, Lord, which is our reasonable service. Let us not be conformed to this world, but transform us, Lord, by the renewing of our minds. Now, Lord, bless this service today. Bless your people all over the world, all over the U.S., all over the nations. We thank you for your mighty works. We lift up your pastors, preachers, teachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists all over the world. The body of Christ, help them to go forth proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord. And then, Lord, we thank you for our listeners. Let them not be weary in well-doing, Lord. Let them not be weary in well-doing. We honor you, Lord God. Now, Lord, bless the ministry today, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Praise God. Those of you who feel led to uh, uh, put your comments in the chat window, please do so. Um, those of you who are watching this via the video, uh, we thank God. These videos come alive when you when you uh, look at them. The anointing is upon these videos, and we praise God. God's word is alive. He's doing mighty things. He wants you to know more than anything else that he loves you just as you are. God loves you. He has not forsaken you. He's not angry with you. He loves you. He knows the situation you're in. But he knows how to get you out. And if you will put your trust in the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, just put your trust in the Lord and walk by faith and walk by faith and not by sight. Ladies and gentlemen, people may dish you. They may kick you to the curb. They may reject you. They may dishonor you. They may abuse you. But God loves you. And no matter what people have done to you, no matter what's happening in your life, you go to God. You go to God, ladies and gentlemen. You go to God. Whatever is happening, you go to God and trust God, ladies and gentlemen, for your life. You trust God. We want to greet uh, Wes and Marisol. Uh, are you guys back from the DR? I see all those beautiful pictures you have. I'm so happy that you're able to go uh, on a vacation overseas, and we've been praying for you. So welcome. Welcome, all of you, uh, to this ministry. For those who are going to watch the tape, we welcome you to. Today, I want to look at part two of what we started last week. And you know, this message is going to bless you like it blessed people last week. The message 
Last week was entitled, God did me a favor. Ladies and gentlemen, I shared some things about me last week and, and, and had the nerve to entitle it, God did me a favor. Well, it's the truth anyhow. I'm going to share some things, just review a few things from last week and uh, bring it up to date and just share with you how God did me a favor. And I believe that what God gives you today is going to help you. Some of you are under bondage. Some of you are under, under bondage. You're guilty about not going to church. You're guilty about not doing this in the neighborhood. Your relatives have you captive. They've got you in bondage thinking uh, 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 negative things about you because you don't give them money. You don't do what they want you to do. Your friends uh, are angry with you because you won't do what they want you to do. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, you've got a life to live and you've got to live it for Jesus. So don't let anybody get you in bondage. I'm going to tell you about a guy who was in bondage several years ago. I mean, he was trying to please everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, don't try to please people. You can't please people. Try to please your children. Try to please your, your spouse. You can't please them. They're, ha they're happy one day and growling and, and frowning at you the next day. Ladies and gentlemen, people are fickle. They're fickle. We have one of our viewers said uh, our, her relatives are driving her nuts. Don't let your relatives drive you nuts. Ladies and gentlemen, put Jesus on them. The Bible says, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on the Lord because he trusts him. That's Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. You need to write that down. It's a promise. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts thee. Don't keep your mind on what your relatives think, what your family thinks. You put your mind on what Jesus thinks, and it's what Jesus thinks that is of importance. Now, if you've got a little uh, reverberation, a little echo on your sound, we're working on the sound, trying to do the sound correctly using two systems. So uh, we hope the sound is coming through clearly for you. Let me tell you about a guy who was so messed up, trying to please everybody, and 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 and. He had to turn to the Lord. I mean, God had to get him out of the situation he was in so he could be more effective for Jesus. And there are many of you out there, pastors, church members, believers, church workers, you're working yourself to a frenzy. And then and then some of you, you're letting your friends and other Christians bring you under conviction and condemning you because they think you ought to be doing more and you're burnt out. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to reach a place where you say, hey, that's it. Enough is enough. Let me tell you about a guy I knew some years ago. Uh, I'm, I'm going to share some ex excerpts from the book that this guy wrote. Uh, his name is uh, Leroy Carter. And he wrote a book called Back to Basics, A Wake Up Call for the Church. His name is Leroy Carter. Yeah, that's the guy right in front of you right now, the one you're listening to. Let me share with you uh, uh, how God did me a favor. And from what I share with you today, it will bless you. And God doesn't want you to work yourself to death. He doesn't want you to work yourself to a frenzy, but he wants you to trust in the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you day by day. Let the Spirit of God show you what to do each day. Don't pattern your life based on what people want you to do. Without a doubt, God saved my life. In addition, he saved my health, my marriage, my family, and my sanity. I'm sharing from the book I wrote, um, Back to Basics, A Wake-Up Call for the Church. You name it, and I have probably done it in the church. Here's a partial list of the jobs I held as pastor. And my, my son, Wes, he could probably say, hey man, more than that. Lorraine and Stacy say, you were doing more than this, dad. I was church janitor, grass cutter, bush trimmer, floor mopper, toilet cleaner, counselor, referee, taxi driver, gopher, meaning pastor, go for this, pastor, go for that. I mean, people would call me from the supermarket, pastor, 
I'm stranded at the market. I don't have a ride home. Can you come to the market and pick me up? Or, Pastor, I need to go to the market to get some food for my kids. I don't have anybody else to take me. I don't have any money for a cab. Can you take me to the market? I was job counselor, job finder, employee placement service, food box stuffer, emergency food distributor. I was the preacher, the teacher, prayer warrior, evangelist, revivalist preacher, intercessor, fundraiser, money lender. People would come to me, you know, and, and, and they could, look, hey, they can look you in the eye and tell you and, and tell you the biggest lie. And, and some of us are gullible enough to believe it. I believe, man, so many people borrow money from and here. Hey, Pastor, can I borrow ten dollars? I'll pay you back next Friday. Man, this guy in North Carolina, I'm not going to tell you his name, but his last name is Johnson. He still owes me a lot of money. He would hit me up every couple of weeks. I'm going to pay you back. I got a check coming in. Man, people were borrowing money, and I was foolish enough to lend it to them. They knew they weren't going to pay me back, and, and some have never paid me back. I was the missionary, worship leader, husband, surrogate husband, father, surrogate father. And the list goes on and on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, I was wearing all those hats at the same time, uh, I admit that I had spoiled my congregation rotten. I admit that I helped a lot of people become lazy because I tried to do it all for them. Yes, the Lord did me a favor, though. He did me a favor. I was doing all these things and trying to preach, trying, trying to direct the ministry, trying to take care of household. Uh, 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 my wife was sick, uh, children in school. And, and we were just going crazy. And so God said to me, son, sit down, stop, take a rest. I said, what do you mean, Lord? The Lord said, I want you to stop pastoring. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many of you pastors out there, and I know many of you. You're working yourselves to a frenzy. There are many of you in the body of Christ. They discovered, the pastor and the people discovered that you are a willing worker. They also know that you don't know how to say no. They also know that you're kind and generous, that if they ask you a gift, ladies and gentlemen, some of you are being exploited. You're being used. You're being abused. There are pastors who know how to manipulate the money givers. There are pastors who know how to manipulate the workers. Now, look here. In every church, there's only a handful of workers, but most of them are working so hard for the church, they neglect their homes, they neglect their spouse, they neglect their children, they neglect their personal hygiene, they neglect their own growth and development, they neglect spending time with the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it is happening in every church all across the board, not only here in America, but in, in other nations. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people in the church, you are workaholics, you don't know how to say no. I know some of them personally, ladies and gentlemen, and I know one guy personally who was a church workaholic who couldn't say no until God delivered me from working, trying to please everybody. And then, ladies and gentlemen, the flip side of this is when God delivers you from being a slave to people, when God delivers you, People are going to get angry with you. They're going to dish you. They're going to kick you to the curb. They're going to talk about you. They're going to talk about your mother. They're going to uh, uh, scandalize your name. Because when you stop doing for people, when you stop doing for people, ladies and gentlemen, they are going to do all kinds of negatives against you. When you stop giving them your hard-earned money, when you stop allowing them to rob your children of school clothes and food, when you stop uh, allowing them to rob you of buying a new dress for your wife, the people are going to get angry with you. When you stop giving every dollar you've got to the church to please the pastor, pastors are going to dish you. They're going to kick you to the curb. So there must be some balance in this unbalanced situation. And so what God did for me, ladies and gentlemen, he did me a favor, and this is part two 
of God did me a favor. He says, son, stop pastoring. Take a rest. I want you to do another job. I want you to stop killing yourself for these people. Ladies and gentlemen, that hurt me when God said that. I said, God, I'm the one who started the church. You called me to start the ministry. I've taught them everything they know. Yes, yes, but you're doing all for them. How can they ever grow up if you're doing everything for them? How can they ever learn how to trust me if they come to you for everything and you give it to them? So God, I mean, it hurt me when God set me down. He set me down from pastoring. That was around 1990, 1991. We had just built a brand new church in Chester, Pennsylvania. And the Lord said, I want you to sit down. You're doing too much for the people. He said, I want you to stay home, take care of your wife. She's sick. You know she's terminally ill. But if you take care of her, I will add to her life. And God bless uh, my wife, Rachel, at that time. She had eight more years to live. God blessed her because I obeyed God. I stopped doing all for the people and I obeyed God. I took good care of her and God gave me a good job in management and it, we, we were blessed. And it took all the pressure off my mind, took all the pressure off my heart. But you know what? The people talked about me like I was a dog. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe that church people, people I gave my life for, people uh, I gave almost everything I had for, found them jobs, uh, found them cars, found them houses to live in. When the moment I left them and said, okay, I'm turning you over to another pastor, they dogged me out. Why are people like that? They dogged me out, but I obeyed God. It hurt. It was very painful. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most painful things in the world is to walk past a person in the mall, a person you gave your paycheck to so that they could pay their rent. You gave your paycheck. You robbed your family and gave your paycheck to that family so that they would not lose their home or their apartment and to have them look at you and turn their heads without even speaking. These are church people, ladies and gentlemen. These are people who have not grown up in God, who are depending on the pastor to do everything for them, who are depending on somebody in the church to do everything for them. And so, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm sharing with you today, I hope it'll be a blessing to you. It's painful. It is very painful when you have to cut people off and stop doing for them. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very painful when you stop doing for your children and you have to tell your son, okay, it's time for you to go get a job. You're 30 years old. It's time for you to go get, get your own job. Or you have to tell your, da your daughter, okay, I'm not going to give you any more money. I'm cutting you off. It's time for you to go to school. You're 45 years old. Time for you to find your own place. Ladies and gentlemen, that's called tough love. It's called tough love. And you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, I might be talking about some of your children. Don't get angry with me if I am. But some of us have some kids, uh, and I'm so glad that my three children are not like this. They will bleed you and drain you for everything you got. Every time the phone rings, hey, mom, where's my mom? Your, my mom there. Mom there. Let me talk to mom. They don't talk to dad. Hey, mom. And it's always, I need this. I need that. You've got a child 50 years old still calling you for rent money. You've got a child 50 years old still asking for help to buy food for that. Ladies and gentlemen, at a certain point, you've got to say, no, that's it. And you've got to say this to some pastors. Pastor calls you. You've got 18 jobs in the church. And the pastor sweet talks you. Well, Sister Smith, uh, you're such a hard worker in the church and the church loves you. And we celebrate you. We praise God for you. And I need you to do me a favor. Uh-oh. Sister Smith, say no. Learn how to say no. You don't have to say yes to your pastor every time he asks you to do something. You don't have to say yes to somebody every time they ask you for something. You don't have to give it to them every time they ask you because they know how to manipulate you. You need to be so fine-tuned with the Holy Spirit that when people approach you, whether they're talking in flowery phrases or they're quoting scripture. And you know, some some use scripture. Well, you know, dear, it says it's better to give than to receive. And, 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 and they will use scripture on you to get what you have 
But ladies and gentlemen, when you learn how to say no, and you force people to trust God for themselves, not only will God do you a favor, but he will do them a favor. And God did me a favor. God did me a favor. Ladies and gentlemen, there must be more power for our households. Ladies and gentlemen, when husbands and wives seek God for themselves and not depend on food stamps, not depend on the welfare, Donald Trump's going to teach a lot of people not to depend on food stamps and welfare. And I'm talking about blacks and whites and Hispanics, too, all across the board. Donald Trump's going to teach a lot of people how to lean on God and God's going to use Donald Trump so that people can come back to him. God wants people to return to him, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm not talking negative about Donald Trump. In fact, I didn't even vote for him. But you know what? I'm starting to like that guy. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Hey, dad, dad, you whacked up, man. Hey, pastor, you whacked up. No, no, I'm starting to like that guy because he's real, he's straightforward, and he's looking America in the eyes and say, it's time for you to get right. It's time for you to get, you may not like him. You may not, you may hate his guts. You, you may not have voted for him, neither did I, but at least he's got the guts to tell it like it is and to stand up and look people in the eye and tell them to do what is right. Now, I don't like everything about him, but there's some things I like about him. Ladies and gentlemen, God did me a favor. I had a dream. He gave me a dream one night. And in this dream, people were chasing me all over the place. Man, I was running. I was running. I was like that song. I'm running for my life. 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 And every in this dream, every door I opened, they were horrible looking people after me. Every window I try to climb through, every hole I try to climb into, they were horrible people after me, gnashing their teeth, demonic people wanting to kill me, wanting to destroy me. And I'm running, running, running everywhere I go. And I couldn't get away from it. Finally, God woke me up from that dream. And I had a whole day to try to calm down, a whole day to try to calm down. And guess what, that next night, the next night, the same dream, ladies and gentlemen, the same dream, people chasing me, trying to destroy me. God gave me the same dream. And so the, after, after that second night, I said, okay, God, what is it? What is it? What is it you're trying to say to me? Because God, I'm worn out. I haven't slept in two nights. God, I mean, people are trying to kill me. I don't know who they are. Demons are attacking me. What's going on, God? And God said, I want you to write a book. He said, I want you to write a book about the church. And that's how I wrote this book, Back to Basics, a wake-up call for the church. God said, those people in the dream, they're the church. These are church, church folks after you, trying to destroy you trying to kill you. These are church folks working you to death. These are church folks trying to keep you in bondage, holding you hostage, trying to make sure that you please them, wanting you to work yourself to their benefit. These are church people who do this. And, and the reason why they're chasing you in your dream is because you said, no, I'm not going to live this kind of life anymore. I may be your pastor, but I'm not going to live and be your flunky. I'm not going to be your slave. I'm not going to be your gopher. I'm not going to try to please you. And ladies and gentlemen there, I want to talk to you pastors out there. So many of you are, are kissing the bishop's butt. Stop kissing the bishop's butt. Some of you are kissing up to the bishop because you want churches, you want assignments, you want preaching assignments. Ladies and gentlemen, if God calls you to preach, he will make a way for you. He will give you an audience. He'll give you a congregation. Some of you need to stop kissing up to the bishop or to higher authorities. Some of you need to stop kissing up to people who are not of God. And a lot of you bishops out there are not of God. I'm going to tell it the way it is. You're manipulators, you're controllers, and you want people to do your will to build your church. But Jesus said, on this rock, I'll build my church. 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And ladies and gentlemen, when God told me that those people in that dream were people trying to kill me, people who hate me, and he said, he said, they're going to hate you because I'm going to change your life. I'm going to change the things you do and the way you do them. And I'm going to change your relationships with people. And many are going to hate on you. But you do what I tell you to do, and I will set you free. Ladies and gentlemen, God did me a favor. Today's message is God did me a favor, part two. God said, I want you to stop trying to please the church. In fact, leave the church. I'm going to give them a new pastor. I'm going to give you a whole new thing to do. I want to show you what the church really is. I want you to draw a nigh unto me. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it's taken me many, many years to get to where I am now. But I left that church after a, a, a miracle building program. God gave us land to build a church on, gave it to us for one dollar. We built the church and God said, turn it over to another pastor. Now you take care of your sickly wife and you do what I tell you to do. And ladies and gentlemen, God has changed my life. I am no slave to anybody. Nobody owns Leroy Carter. Nobody owns Leroy Carter. I'm a doulos for Jesus. Doulos is the Greek word for slave. I'm a slave of Jesus Christ. I do his what he wants me to do. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if somebody asks me to do something and I don't want to do it, I don't feel led to do it, I say no. And I can say no to you without feeling guilty. If a family member asks me uh, anything and, and I say no, I can look them in the eye and say no. Uh, and, 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 and even if uh, people higher up in the church ask me to do something, and if I don't think it's of God and God doesn't, no, I do not participate in it. I will not waste God's time or my time. I trust the Lord and, and, and I seek him for everything that I do. I seek him. I seek him for this ministry. People say, well, this ain't a church. Uh, you're you're in your home office. You're on your computer. You're preaching the word from your computer. This ain't a church. Ladies and gentlemen, all contraire, this church is reaching people all over the world. If you don't believe that, ask the Kenyans. Ask people in China. Ask people in Saudi Arabia. Ask people in Korea. Ask people in Latin America. Ask people in Canada. Ask people in the Caribbean about the Back to Basics Ministry Church. God is reaching more people now through this ministry than ever before. Why? Because we're not a slave to anybody and we're not trying to please folks. Stop trying to please people. Stop trying to please people. Stop trying to please your family. If they don't like you, hey, so what? If they don't, they don't invite you to the family reunion, so what? If they don't invite you to the family dinner, so what? If they don't send you a birthday card, so what? If you don't get phone calls from them, so what? Jesus will wish you happy birthday. Jesus will give you your daily bread. Jesus will keep you in perfect peace. I think I'm talking to somebody. I think your family's driving you nuts because you think you ought to be doing more for them. Look here. The more you do for some of them turkeys, the worse they hate you. The more you do for them, the more they hold their hands out. You keep doing for them, then they have both hands held out. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to say no. You've got to tell that 50-year-old son, get a job. you got to tell that 35-year-old daughter with her three babies out of wedlock, get your own house. Get one of those babies' fathers to set you up in your own apartment. Ladies and gentlemen, I've had to counsel families in this. I've had, I had to pat, I counsel a pastor, two pastors in this very same matter. I had to tell them, hey, look here, your ministry is not growing because your children are pulling down the ministry. You've got grown up kids in your house and they've got babies out of wedlock and they're living like hell and you're trying to run a ministry and you're permitting it. You're letting it go on. How do you expect God to bless you when your your family is not a testimony to the glory and honor of God? Your family is not living in holiness and righteousness. Well, you know, the next stop, they dropped me off their mailing list. They deleted my phone. They stopped calling me and they're mad at me. And then they start talking about me because the truth hurts, ladies and gentlemen, the truth hurts. There are times, Father, 
when you've got to tell your children the truth. Hey, son, you're 20 years old now. Time you to either join the army, go to college, get a job, but you're not going to sit around my house, smoke a reefer. Ladies and gentlemen, you, I don't care who you are. You can be the president of the United States. You do not smoke reefer in my church, you do, in my house. You do not come to my house and drink liquor. You do not use profanity in my house. My house is a place of holiness. I don't care who you are. You don't come here and say anything that comes to your mind. You respect my wife. You respect uh, the household. You respect the Lord. If you're the bishop and you got a thousand churches over you, there are things you don't say in my house or in my presence. That's just the way I roll, ladies and gentlemen, just the way I live. But I, it's been a long journey to get here. And God has had to set me free. It's been very painful. It's, it's, it's meant losing a lot of people who were close to me or said they were close to me. It's losing friends. When you stop sponsoring friends with your paycheck, when you stop buying them drugs or buying them liquor, or you stop uh, uh, buying uh, gowns and jewelry for uh, somebody else's wife, or you stop doing all these things you shouldn't have been doing in the first place, people will hate on you. But ladies and gentlemen, I would rather have people hate on me and have Jesus love me than anything else in the world. So ladies and gentlemen, make your decision. Stop trying to please people and please the Lord. And if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, and you're a slave of it and can't get free, make up your mind, I'm going to get free from this and ask the Lord to deliver you. Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen God deliver people from adultery, deliver people from drugs, heal people of greed, heal people of selfishness and pride. I've seen God do a flip flop in many lives, including mine. The moment you make up your mind, Lord, I'm tired of this life. I'm tired of trying to please everybody. I'm tired of being 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 kicked around by people. I want to live your life. Then, ladies and gentlemen, when you seek the, seek the Lord and he reveals to you, I made you for a purpose. Now live the purpose for which I made you and seek my face and I'll give you the strength and I will give you the the abil I will give you the ability to live for the reason why I made you. Then, ladies and gentlemen, you're on the road to peace and deliverance. It's a mighty good thing to wake up like I woke up this morning, saying, "Hallelujah, praise God!" I don't owe anybody anything but to love them. I don't owe you anything. Oh, I got some bills; they'll be paid. Praise God. But I don't owe you anything. You can't blackmail me. You can dig up stuff in my past. And I've been threatened. I had a family member threaten me. Yeah, well, you wait till I expose you to the rest of the family about what you did back in 1960. 1960. Oh, I told him, the Lord rebuke you. That's under the blood of Jesus. Bring it on. That's under the blood of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, when you can get to the point where you don't care what they say about you, but you know that you know that you know that you know that God loves you. He's forgiven you of your sins. He's accepted you in the beloved. Then you can go forward and let the Lord use you. And I say to people all over America, all over Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Canada, Mexico, wherever you're watching this video, you can be free. Jesus will set you free. And then you can live your life not owing anybody, anything but to love them. That's a good way to live. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a good way to live. I can look you in the eye. I can look anybody in the world in the eye and say, I don't owe you anything. I'm grateful for what you've done for me. I thank you for helping me in the past, even help me in the present, but I don't owe you anything. Don't try to blackmail me. I don't owe you a thing. Everything I have and everything I hope to be, I owe to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus died on the cross for my sins. God said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and you are too. And if you want to worship God, 
for the purpose for which he made you. Confess your sins, repent of your sins. Thank Jesus for dying on the cross for your sins. And then ask the Lord God to be your savior, your Lord. And then, ladies and gentlemen, and then this is the kicker. You want to really be set free from people, set free from what they think, what they say about you, what they put on Facebook, what they put on Twitter. If you want to really be set free, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Ask God, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. And then when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen, you get a case of the hallelujah, I don't cares. Well, preacher, what is the hallelujah? I don't cares. Well, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And whatever people say about me, whatever they think about me, whatever they do to me, hallelujah, I don't care. And you just let it go. You care about Jesus. You care about pleasing him. You care about living for him day by day. And if your family doesn't love you the way you're worshiping the Lord, you keep on worshiping the Lord. Don't take down. Be like Nehemiah. Stay on the wall. Make them look up to you. They don't like that lifestyle they're in. They want you to come down with them. But you stay on the wall and be an example of holiness and righteousness. And if they never like you or accept you, for who you are. When you breathe your last breath, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be at home with the Lord. When I breathe my last breath, whether you like me or not, when I breathe my last breath, I'm at home with the Lord Jesus. And that's what this life is all about, preparing to go home to be with Jesus. And when I leave here, you folks who are mad at me, you find somebody else to get mad at. Turn your venom on someone else. But I pray that you get saved, get sanctified, get filled with the Holy Ghost. And I pray that you'll help others find God through Jesus Christ. God did me a favor. God, I thank you so much. Hallelujah for doing me a favor. It has not been easy, God. We've been through some hard times together, some difficult times. God, it has been very painful on many occasions. But I thank you, hallelujah, for who you are and your love for me. And I trust you, Lord, to guide me. And I trust you to guide each and every listener and meet every need as they put their trust in you, as they make their determination, they're going to live for you. I trust you, Lord to do exceeding abundantly above all that they can ask or think. For you said, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard what the Lord has in store for them that love him. Lord God, I thank you. I thank each and every one of you for listening today. I pray to God to bless you and meet your every need. Now we're getting ready to sign off on the broadcast, on the, the tape, the videoing on both systems. And then uh, we're, we're Ask you to stay online so that we can chat, so that we can talk. Uh, uh, open your phones and we'll talk. But you will not be recorded. As of this moment, um, we're going to stop the recording. Oh, we forgot something. If you want to be saved, no matter who you are, you're listening, you're under conviction, you want to change in your life, and you want to be saved, ask the Lord now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I ask Jesus to come into my life and be my Savior and my Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. If you pray that prayer or a form of it, you are saved according to the word of God. You are saved, and we thank God for you. Then I want you to get in touch with me. We'll send you some literature. We'll pray for you. We'll encourage you on the way. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. Until next Sunday morning, uh, this is the Back to Basics, Back to Basics online church where God is touching and changing lives. God did me a favor. I'm glad he did. He's going to do you a favor, too.